In this video, I will go back and focus on some of the details of building the Tide Bottle. Unlike some of my previous tutorials, I won't be going step by step, but will be focusing a little bit more on some of the highlights and some of the unusual aspects of the build strategy. As with all models, we need to start with a rock solid layout. This model has a front layout, a handle and logo area detail layout, a middle plane upon which is drawn a middle layout cross section, which I'm going to pause for a moment to talk about in more detail. This one layout controls the overall shape of the bottle right through the cross section through the round cutout, controls the overall width of the bottle, and also controls the narrowed down portion of the bottle in the handle zone. It also controls the surface of the logo area. And this portion of the sketch is parametrically linked to the corresponding features in the front layout. So here we see this point is aligned with the round cutout. This point is aligned with this arc. And this portion of this point is aligned with this outside arc of the handle area. In order to make this model manageable, I had to take a very important liberty with the overall shape of the bottle, primarily in this area here. In this area we see that this surface is running largely in a Z direction, but just before it contacts what will be the logo cutout, it starts heading off in more of an X direction. In the real Tide bottle, this surface is going almost completely in the Z direction the entire way before it hits the logo area. It does not start to curve over before hitting the logo zone. The problem with this is if we try to cut a round circle out of a surface which is going almost entirely in the same direction as the cut, what we're going to end up with is an edge when viewed from the front which is very wobbly looking. That would make it very difficult to fit a logo surface in here which will be smooth because of this wobbly edge. So I adjusted my sketch so that this surface is turning and presenting itself in a more perpendicular direction to the trim direction so that this round circle that will be cut out will be cutting itself out of a surface which is going more in an X direction rather than a Z direction. This will give us the more graceful looking curve that we're looking for when the trim is completed. The remaining layout sketches consist of a bottom layout and a neck area layout. This curve here, this curve here, this curve here, and this curve here are all copied in order to make the main body in addition to this curve here as well to control the center width of the bottle. Then the circle is copied in order to use a trim to cut out the round circle. And here we've got that nice graceful arc I was talking about. And if we look from the top, we can see that this surface, just before hitting the perimeter, is starting to head off in this direction rather than continuing in this direction. This is the end of part two. We'll move on to part three in the next video.